here, Matula, Israel, far northernmost point in this country. We'll be back with more from here in just a moment. Soledad. All right, Miles, thanks. New warning to tell you about. It's just in this morning from Osama bin Laden's top deputy. Al Jazeera is airing a tape just over an hour ago. It's Ayman al-Zawahiri with a not-so-veiled threat promising action by al-Qaeda in response to Israeli attacks in both Lebanon and in Gaza. Here's part of what he said. The al-Qaeda organization will not stay silent regarding what the Muslims in Palestine Stein and Lebanon are facing. Octavia Nasser is looking at this tape. She's going to join us with some analysis right at the top of the hour. There are Americans who are fighting with the Israeli Defense Forces during this new Middle East crisis. American Morning's Alina Cho spent some time with a suburban family in New York, which has, I was surprised here, a long family tradition of this very thing. That's right. Three generations, Soledad. It is unbelievable. You know, many people may not realize there are indeed American citizens serving in the Israeli army. American Jews who in many cases were born and raised in the United States and have such a special connection to Israel, they are willing to leave the United States and fight for Israel. In that way, it is their American dream. For 21-year-old American Matt Belsky, fighting in the Israeli army is family tradition. So when Matt told his parents he wanted to join the Israeli Defense Forces, or IDF, they were not surprised. I kind of expected it. I didn't want it to happen. I promised him a Corvette every year if he would stay here and go to graduate school. But I knew it wouldn't work. And I did the same thing to my parents. Matt's father, Jay, was first a U.S. Marine. He left to join the Israeli army in 1973, just in time for the Yom Kippur War. Then there's his father. Zeus Belsky and his two brothers led what historians call the largest armed rescue of Jews by Jews from the Nazis during World War II. The Belsky brothers, the subject of a book and a documentary, saved more than 1,200 Jews, as many as Oscar Schindler. What I did and what Matt is doing now is a piece of cake compared to what they did. Matt was born in the U.S., but also holds an Israeli passport. Matthew went not knowing there was going to be a war. They went planning to join the IDF and, you know, be in the army and feel what it's like to help defend the country, but they really didn't anticipate a war. The Belskis keep a close eye on the news from their home in Valley Stream, New York, more than 5,000 miles away. And it can be grim. Matt told his mother by phone the Israeli soldiers killed in Lebanon Wednesday were part of his unit. His parents try to talk to Matt a few times a week, like the day we were there. Uh, how, how are you, honey? All right, is everything okay? How's the war? Good. It's good? <laughs> All right. Stay safe. Don't be a hero. Do you need anything? Matt's mom, Margo, admits she worries a lot about her son, but she's certain he's exactly where he wants to be. He followed his dream to do what he wanted to do. You know, some people, they say, talk the talk. Well, he walked the walk. He went. Now, Matt will serve a total of two years in the Israeli army. After that, his parents say he plans to, or at least they hope he comes home to the United States, where he plans to get his MBA, maybe even stay here for a while. Soledad, he was last here in June for his twin sister's wedding, and at the time, his mom joked to him, you know, I have a couple of safe houses where I could hide you. You don't have to go back. <laughs> and uh, he said he wasn't having any of that, and she said the toughest thing for her was to take him back to the airport, you can imagine, oh, gosh, as a parent yeah. having to do that. Is this a tip... Uh, familiar story here in America? I mean, are there a lot you know, of Americans who it, are serving? It's hard to say. Um, we do hear about it, certainly. Um, we were able to find several families uh, in the United States. And, you know, we asked the IDF about this, and they said those numbers are classified in terms of how many Americans are serving. So we asked them, can you tell us what the percentage is of the total force? And they said, well, we might be able to get back to you on that. And, and sure enough, we didn't hear back. But I can tell you anecdotally that Matt's mother told me that he went to Israel with 30 other Americans and that there's another batch going at the end of the summer. And so certainly this is something she said uh, kids from all over the country are signing up to do. Huh, that's interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. And I, interesting they wouldn't give you the number of the percentage yeah. either. <laughs> Alina, thanks. Sure. Let's get right back to Miles yeah. this morning. Hey, Miles. Thank you very much, Soledad. North of the border in Lebanon, the war appears to be expanding and widening. The Israeli Defense Forces, the Israeli Air Force, says it is not targeting the Lebanese army per se, but as it continues to strike at targets such as radar installations and communications capabilities, inevitably, you could call it collateral damage or not, 
but inevitably a wider group beyond Hezbollah is affected. Joining me now to talk about this and how this widening war is affecting the economy of Lebanon, which had just come to a rebound after a long civil war, is Sami Haddad. He is the Lebanese Minister for Economy and Trade. Mr. Haddad, we've heard about the Israeli Air Force striking this radar site. The Israelis say they're not targeting Lebanese army installations per se. What is your perception, though? Do you think is the Israeli Israelis are casting too wide a net and targeting beyond Hezbollah targets? The fact of the matter is that Israel is targeting the civilian population. 80% of the casualties or more are civilians. Half of them are children. And the war is destroying Lebanon and its economy completely. And what I would like to say is that this war is, not, is certainly not in the interest of the American people or the U.S. government because this war is achieving one certain thing. It's undermining the government of Lebanon and destroying my country. So well, you could we make really an, Mr. Na Mr. Haddad, Mr. Haddad, you could make an argument that Hezbollah is undermining your government and to the extent that the Israelis might eliminate Hezbollah, that could help your government. What do you say to that? Yes, I say to that that I don't think Israel wants to eliminate militarily Hezbollah. I don't think it can be done easily and within a short period of time. And therefore, the, the, the solution is a political and diplomatic solution. Let's stop the war because the war is certainly destroying my country and undermining a moderate, democratically elected government. And let's get on with the diplomatic and the political solution. Mr. Haddad, though, if, if that is the course of action and if Hezbollah remains armed to the teeth post ceasefire, won't Hezbollah continue to be a problem that undermines the government in Beirut? Look, Hezbollah has two cabinet ministers in the government, but if we achieve what we...